There are seven Hollywood directors that each perfectly represent one of the seven deadly sins. Starting with the sin of pride is Alfred Hitchcock. Pride is a sin often associated with an excessive belief in one's own abilities. This trait is embodied in Alfred Hitchcock, a director whose name is synonymous with suspense and psychological thriller. But beneath the veneer of cinematic brilliance was a man driven by unyielding pride, particularly in his need for absolute control of every single aspect in his films. Hitchcock's control extended beyond the camera. He was known for meticulously manipulating actors and orchestrating their performances with precision. I would never say such an unfeeling, rude thing about actors at all. What I probably said was that all actors should be treated like cattle. <laughs> A classic example is his direction of Tippi Hendren in The Birds. Hitchcock's methods were so controlling that he insisted on using real birds in the famous attack scenes, leading to Hendren being injured on set. This instance wasn't just for realism. It was Hitchcock exerting absolute control, clearly displaying his pride in mastering every detail no matter the cost. His influence wasn't limited to the set either. With Psycho, Hitchcock revolutionized marketing strategies in cinema. He controlled the audience's experience, enforcing strict no late admission policies in theaters, creating suspense even before the viewers got to their seats. But Hitchcock's pride didn't just challenge actors, it also put him at odds with producers. His relationship with David Selzik is a prime example. Selzik, a powerhouse producer, initially overshadowed Hitchcock in their collaborations, but Hitchcock, unwilling to be outshunned, fought back subtly. He deliberately shot films like Rebecca and Spellbound in a manner that left only one viable option for editing, his way. This was not just about artistic integrity, but about asserting dominance, a power play that stemmed from pride. He wanted to leave a message. Alfred Hitchcock was a master of suspense and a figure profoundly shaped by his pride. His need for control while contributing to his legendary status also reveals the complexities of a man for whom cinema was not just an art, but a domain to his command. But unlike Hitchcock, the next person's sin was a lot less subtle. Wrath is a sin often characterized by an intense anger or impulsive actions. Few embody this sin as vividly as Werner Herzog, a director not known only for his groundbreaking films but also for his fiery temperament and daredevil antics on and off the set. His approach to filmmaking was anything but conventional. He often put himself and his crew in hazardous situations just to capture the desired authenticity he was looking for. In the making of his film, Fiscalardo, Herzog's obsession with realism led to the crazy task of hauling a 320-ton steamboat over a hill without the aid of special effects. This reckless endeavor strained the resources and endangered the lives of everybody involved, all driven by Herzog's unyielding wrathful passion for cinematic authenticity. Perhaps the most infamous manifestation of Herzog's wrath is his relationship with Klaus Kinski. During the filming of The Wrath of God, tensions between the director and the actor reached a boiling point. Legend has it that Herzog threatened Kinski at gunpoint to get him to finish the scene. And his wrathful spirit wasn't confined just to film sets. He once jumped into a cactus patch on a bet, an act of sheer impulsiveness and disregard for personal safety. Another legendary moment was when he lost a bet to a fellow filmmaker, Errol Morris, and ended up eating his own shoe. This was not a mere stunt, but a testament to his determination and a metaphor for his approach to life and filmmaking. Fierce, unorthodox, and unapologetically intense. Werner Herzog is a director whose wrathful spirit fueled the career of extraordinary films and legendary tales. His relentless pursuit of his vision marks him as a true embodiment of the wrath of cinema. While Herzog's exploits made for works often cited as original and heavily relying on actor improvisation, the same cannot be said about the next filmmaker's sin of envy. Envy is typically seen as a longing for others' traits, status, or abilities. In the cinematic universe, Quentin Tarantino's career embodies this sin, not in a negative light, but as a driving force behind his unique storytelling style. Tarantino's films are a tapestry woven from the threads of past cinematic eras and a homage to the days of cinema he admires. 
Tarantino's love for cinema is no secret. Each of his films is a love letter to the genres that shaped his own love for movies. Take Kill Bill for instance, which is a kaleidoscope of martial arts cinema, spaghetti westerns, and Japanese samurai films. Tarantino doesn't just reference these genres, he envies them, longing to recapture and reinvent their magic in his work. In Pulp Fiction, Tarantino pays tribute to the gangster films of yesteryears, blending them with his unique narrative style. But it's in Once Upon a Time in Hollywood where his envy comes to the forefront. The film is a nostalgic journey through the late 1960s Hollywood, an era Tarantino himself never experienced but clearly longs for. Through Rick Dalton and Cliff Booth, Tarantino lives out a fantasy of being a part of that golden age, a period he envies for its raw, unbridled creativity. Tarantino's envy extends beyond narratives, evident in his cinematic techniques. The way he resurrects outdated technologies like 70mm film for The Hateful Eight, or in his insistence on using practical effects over CGI, reflects a yearning for a time when filmmaking was more tactical and more real. This isn't just nostalgia, it's an envious homage to the tactical authenticity of classic filmmaking. Quinn Tarantino is a director whose envy of past cinematic eras fuels his creative genius. His films are not just entertainment, they are a bridge between the golden past and the innovative present of cinema. While Tarantino's films are filled with violence and lust, there is no director more deserving of the next sin. Lust is a sin often associated with an intense desire and carnal appetite. Gaspar Noé stands out as a director who delves unflinchingly into this territory. His films are not mere stories. They're visceral experiences that explore the raw and often dark sides of human sexuality. Gaspar Noé's work is a journey into the depth of human desire. His film Love is a prime example. It's a film that blurs the lines between art and erotica, between cinema and reality. The film's explicit scenes are not just for shock value, they are integral to his exploration of lust, love, and loss. Noe's portrayal of sexuality is as much emotional as it is physical, making love a poignant study of the complexities of human relationships. Noe's Enter the Void and Climax further sentiment his fascination with the theme of lust. In Climax, Noe turns a dance party into a nightmarish descent of carnal madness. Noe's cinematic style is as bold as his themes. To immerse the audience fully, he employs disorienting visuals, non-linear storytelling, and intense soundscapes. His films are a testament to the power of cinema to evoke raw emotion and make us confront our notions of desire, pleasure, and morality. Gaspar Noe is a filmmaker who uses lust as a theme and a lens to explore the human condition. His prerogative and often controversial work challenges us to look beyond the surface and question the very nature of our desires. While Noe's films were never made with the goal of turning a profit, the next director on our list is fueled with nothing but excess and greed. Greed is often seen as an insatiable desire for wealth and success. In Hollywood, there's one director's name who is synonymous with blockbuster extravagance and financial triumphs. Michael Bay. Known for his high octane action sequences and spectacular visual effects, Bay's approach to cinema is as grandiose as it is lucrative. Michael Bay's films, from the Transformers series to Armageddon, are a spectacle of excess. His signature style, fast cuts, sweeping camera movements, and of course, monumental explosions. These are not just elements of storytelling. They are a loud statement of cinematic opulence. Bay's movies are crafted for the box office, often prioritizing spectacle over narrative depth, a trait that some critics cite as a manifestation of greed in filmmaking. Bay's success at the box office is undeniable. His films have grossed billions worldwide, making him one of the most commercially successful directors of our time. But this success comes with a caveat. The pursuit of blockbuster hits has often led Bay to favor visual grandeur over character development and storytelling. A choice that mirrors the sin of greed, an endless quest for bigger and flashier. Despite his commercial success, Bay's films have been met with mixed critical reception. The dichotomy of Bay's approach can be described as the pursuit of the box office gold at the expense of cinematic storytelling. Michael Bay is a director whose name is synonymous with cinematic extravagance, 
His career, marked by financial successes and stylistic excess, encapsulates the greed in modern filmmaking. Michael Bay may be the king of the modern blockbuster, but the next director's insatiable desire for perfection makes him the most gluttonous director of all time. Gluttony is typically associated with an excessive indulgence, although it finds a unique representation in the world of cinema through the legendary director Stanley Kubrick. Kubrick wasn't gluttonous in the traditional sense. His appetite was for perfection, an insatiable desire to push the boundaries of filmmaking to their absolute limits. Kubrick's approach to filmmaking was characterized by an obsessive attention to detail. His perfectionism is legendary. For example, in The Shining, the infamous Here's Johnny took 127 takes to capture. This relentless pursuit of the perfect shot, the perfect performance, was the Kubrick trademark. But it was also the manifestation of gluttony, an unending hunger for cinematic excellence. Kubrick's demands on actors were notorious. In Full Metal Jacket, he pushed Arlie Emery and Vincent D'Onofrio to their limits. His insistence on numerous takes for even the simplest scene was much more than a quest for perfection. It was an indulgence in his uncompromising vision. This approach often exhausted his cast and crew, sometimes leading to strained relationships. But it stemmed from his gluttonous need for control and perfection in his art. Beyond his demanding nature, Stanley Kubrick is a filmmaker whose gluttonous pursuit of perfection left an indelible mark on cinema. His legacy is not just in the films he created, but in the uncompromising standards he set, a testament to the gluttony of a visionary. However, the next director on our list will never be remembered for perfection of any kind. Sloth, often characterized by laziness and a lack of effort, finds a unique embodiment in the film industry through the figure of Yue Bull. Known for his low effort video game adaptations and confrontational demeanor, Bull's career has been marked by controversy and criticism making him a peculiar but yet fitting representation of this sin. Bull's approach to filmmaking has been often criticized for its apparent lack of effort and quality. Films like House of the Dead and Alone in the Dark are frequently cited as examples of his slothful approach to the art of cinema. Rather than capturing the essence of the source material, these adaptations often come off as hastily assembled, lacking in narrative cohesion and technical proficiency. His reputation extends beyond his films, his public persona is marked by a contentious attitude towards critics and audiences alike. Bull responded to his critics with outright hostility, once even challenging them to a series of boxing matches. This brash, dismissive attitude towards criticism reflects a slothful disregard for growth and improvement in his craft. His approach has been characterized as formulaic and uninspired, relying on shock value and sensationalism over meaningful storytelling and artistic innovation. This has led to the perception of Bull as embodying the slothful side of filmmaking a reluctance to evolve or challenge himself artistically. Uwe Boll is a director whose career has been as controversial as it has been criticized. In the cinema landscape, he stands on the cautionary tale of sloth, a reminder of the importance of dedication and effort in pursuing filmmaking. Thank you for watching till the end. If you want more videos like this, make sure to hit the subscribe button. If you have any additional people that could fit the list, make sure to leave it down in the comments.